Hello, welcome back to Occupy SF TV here in Castro Valley with Occupy SF and uh, some other people that are starting to gather here on the corner. This is an anti-war uh, protest that's been going on here on this corner for about 30 years. Um, for those of you who are still tuned in that already have that information from the previous broadcast, sorry about the drop. It was, uh, looks like it was a technical error or a service error. Currently I'm uh, broadcasting on a contour camera using a Cerevo live shell and uh, my droid. This is a really handy setup that I have here. Uh, makes it so that I can shoot generally hands-free. I can add on microphones uh, for better quality audio and if everything's working right, I should be able to pull up my own stream on my device, make sure that it's uh, coming in good. Hmm. No items found. I just saw it. It's right there. Anyway, we're going to be here for a while, probably two hours protesting on this corner with uh, our friend God right over here from... Uh, well, he's been protesting many things for over 30 years, uh, a war veteran, and um, he's, he's very anti-war. He protests everything. I met him at Occupy San Francisco um, sometime last year, and uh, through the last year's time, I've gotten to know him uh, very well. He's a good friend of mine now, great guy, um, does a lot of donations to Occupy San Francisco. He's always... Uh, active in protesting anything that's worth protesting uh, is his motto. Apparently I have a, a, a good signal here. I'm going to go ahead and change the camera angle so you guys can see the rest of the people that are here. I'll go over this way a little bit. No, we're here on the corner of Castro Valley Boulevard and what's this other road, God? Redwood Road. Redwood Road. So if you'd like to join us, come on down. Uh, we're going to be here for probably another hour and a half at this uh, anti-war rally, and we'd love to see you down here. This is a fun place to protest, too. Yeah? I guess maybe it's because I'm used to it. Well, so far, I think this is, this is a great spot. I mean, there's a bench right over there for us to sit on, and... Uh, we got now, this tree and, and these rocks. It safely doesn't get an attitude about it if you park in the parking lot. I mean, they might if you did it every day, but they don't usually. Well, that's nice of them, because if, uh, if they wanted to, they could put up a bitch about it, but, you know. <clears throat> so we're just going to hang out here. You can uh, enjoy the show. We're going to be, like I said, protesting for about an hour and a half. We've been here for about half an hour already. Uh, it took me a little time to set up the equipment. If you uh, have any uh, comments, suggestions, questions, feel free to email me, uh, OccupyOneLiberty at Gmail. You can also hit me up on the Twitter. It's there on your screen, at OccupyOneLiberty. Uh, also, don't forget to check out the website, independentcitizenmedia.weebly.com. And uh, I have a new project that I'm working on with Kelly Johnson. She's a photographer that's been uh, taking uh, photographs of protesting and uh, movements for since 2006 I believe and uh, that new project is Occupy the Odyssey you can find uh, the website for that at OccupyTheOdyssey.Weebly.com you can also find it on Facebook Occupy the Odyssey as a uh, page um, check them out click like on the page we can uh, sure use the help on that and get people uh, more interested we're going to be uh, traveling out to the inauguration and uh, taking photos of it is what uh, Kelly Kelly primarily does and uh, I'm obviously a video journalist so that's what I'll be doing um, we're also going to be stopping at other Occupy encampments and trying to collaborate coordinate with with other people on you know how to solve the problems and you know working together things like that check out the website there's a there's a whole list of uh, questions that we have there I can't remember them right now um, 
real interesting stuff that we're going to be doing. And I hope you, uh, you know, check it out and like it. And just like everybody else these days, it's uh, privately funded by ourselves. So if we could get any public support, it would help uh, for fuel costs, uh, travel expenses, things like that. Um, we don't have a donation link up yet, but we will soon. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So check it out. We're just going to be standing here. I'm going to go hang out with my friends and uh, enjoy. We don't have a donation link up yet. In the great words of the, uh, what is it, the late great Michael Jackson, heal the world, make it a better place, take a look at the man in the mirror, I'm asking him to make a change, right? Everything's black and white, just beat it. Republicans. Yeah, if Montana's watching. Montana and sister, we're out there. Let's do a flash mob next week, Wednesday. If God does this every Wednesday at 5.30. Everybody, right here on the, what is this, Castro Valley and Redwood? And Redwood Avenue right here every Wednesday. God's been doing it for 10 years, protesting this bullshit war that we're involved to get involved in. Um, so every Wednesday, 5.30, Castro Boulevard, Redwood Avenue. Right here, bring your sign, bring yourself, come protest with us. Love you. And, uh, the reason you don't see God anymore is he's occupied the other corner over here to make sure the traffic from the other direction is uh, getting a view of what we have going on here and being uh, what I like to call educated. Some honking. We're gonna go for a little ride here. So I can show you the signs we have set up. You want to beat for peace.
this is the all about the Occupy and like, and you know, the corporation is like the, the corporation is like the the new mafia. It's the American mafia. It's just legal, right? And so. We've got to make sure, we got to take Congress. Congress is bought and paid for by the big corporations in Wall Street. That's right. And that's what we got going. We want we want to take it back because it's supposed to be for us, the people. That's it. That's right. And that's why we're here with you. That's why we're here. We're here to show the people in Castro Valley how we feel about the corporate control of everything, man. Elections. Our government, Congress, Congress. Oh. Yeah. Our Congress. It's our Congress. Our Congress. Not their it's supposed Congress. Supposed to be Congress of the people, for the people, and by the people, not of by and for the corporations. And the bankers. And that's what's happened. Yeah, Wall Street banksters. The, you know, mm -hmm. Wall Street, the oil corporations who write our. They write our basically our legislation. They 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 run the military. They start wars for oil. I just gotta well, say, you know, thank God, Rob Rob to me did not get back in, did not get appointed by Wall Street. He was their puppet, and we would be at war. We we'd be heading for another war again, like the last time. So that's what we're here celebrating, kind of, you know, a, a small victory tonight tonight, uh -huh. which is that we got at least we held off the extremists radicals, right, who were going to take over, even further consolidate their power, their power and give even more money to Wall Street. Well, that's what they tried to do, but... Uh, so now, now we're just going to, we're going to figure out, okay, we're going to, we're going to figure out how we take the next step, which is, you know, get rid of the influence of uh, Wall Street on the, on our government. And, you know, Absolutely. So, that's that's the bottom line. That's where we're going. Well, that that's uh, definitely what Occupy stood for. Well, you most know, of Occupy and is, is exposing the corporate state, right? Right. I and mean, that's kind of what it's about. Uh huh. Right. So, you know, we and we've been coming here for years to this corner. Right? How long have you been coming here? We've been here. We started coming here before they invaded Iraq in 2003. Okay. So we were here in November of 2002 protesting their plans to invade Iraq. That's how long this has been going on. Where is that? And, and it's my understanding corner. God's been coming here much longer. Uh, no, no. God showed up. Uh, God showed up. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. I mean, I think he saw us here. He was here pretty early on. Okay. But, so I was and then Daniel was mistaken Daniel on the information Daniel was earlier. one of the original ones as well. Okay. But it was me and two other people kind of started this So thing. six, seven years. Uh, it's been since 2002. So we're going actually, oh crap, 12, we just 13. passed our 10th anniversary. Wow. Hey guys, dude, <laughs> hey. They don't even realize. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe God might. God. No, I don't know. Ask him. I say, I'd ask him. I'd say, do you know how long we've been here? Yeah. Did you, did, didn't we just pass a milestone? I'll do that. <laughs> only team that is owned by the people. They are a socialist team. All of that convergence of symbolism coming right before, right, right during the time of Egypt, puts puts that whole thing where wow. Occupy falls into that nice train of events mm. that led to not only this election, but the possibilities that this election can expose. So to all those cynics who say, don't vote, I say, vote as the nuisance it is, do it, but don't consider that you've done your civic duty by doing that. Just do that, then go do your civic duty. But I, I, I absolutely deny to the people who talk about how we should be electing third parties. Yes, we should. But I deny the, the validity of their argument there, that elections do not matter, that elections are completely bad things, that there is the, the cynicism associated with one party or the other. I will, I, I'm here to say categorically to the Occupy movement, the two parties that you hate, the Democrats and the Republicans, are not the same.
please figure out that this election has provided all of you in the movement with an enormous opportunity to realize many of your most cherished goals. You notice that although, that although it was never even whispered about during the entire campaign, Obama threw a line out there about global warming and it got the biggest cheer of the night and very obviously noticed by all the people as something that had not been discussed. Obama didn't discuss it during the campaign because he knew it would be political suicide and we would have Romney. Romney knew the very same thing. Instead, they sat there and yammered about clean coal. Okay, they're all hypocrites and they're all a bad example in many ways. But let's throw away some old metaphors. We have the old saying about the lesser of two evils. Let's rephrase that and let's say, we're disappointed with the dragon slayer, but we don't want the dragon. May I leave it at that, please? Sure. Get a close-up of your shirt. Oh, yes. Don't get me started about 9-11. You have PhD-level understanding of the issue here that you are challenging, right? This was the now, wait. November. Yeah. I got a question. Is what were we discussing uh, that you that I told you that needed to be repeated, and that was about what we won, what Occupy forced the uh, American people to think and do. Yes. What I, did we get out of it? I have the I have great respect for the Occupy movement, and I do believe it's true that that it has had an enormous effect on recent American politics because we've been quietly fed 30 years worth of propaganda about how it's not a zero-sum game, somebody else getting rich has nothing to do with you getting poor, we're being told this nonsense all the time, to the point where the people actually believe that there's no responsibility from one human being to another where money is concerned. They forget that our entire tax Okay, what's going on? In any case, among the things the Occupy movement managed to do, and is still doing, is to highlight the glaring inequality in our society that, that is at the heart of almost all of our problems, even the environmental problems. And furthermore, what's so fascinating about the Occupy movement is that they came along in the context shortly after a massive, a massive near revolutionary occupation, though not called by that name, the Capitol in Madison during the time when Scott Walker was trying to take away labor rights. At the same time, Egypt and Tunisia were both going down because of what amounted to be, what amounted to the same thing as an occupation, and suddenly it was being proposed and tried with great success in America. Of course, when we have success, we get a response, don't we? Now, wait a minute. Now, what about the people that got elected? Uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren and such. Yeah, is everybody out there, is everybody who's cynical about elections aware of the campaign of Elizabeth Warren the successful campaign, as in she was elected. This is the woman, for those of you who don't know it, that was originally supposed to be the person running the new uh, Consumer Affairs Department. She was the one who set it up, and then the Republicans, and in their usual capacity, stonewalled any chance that she would become the director of this organization, she is extremely focused on the inequities caused by the banks and likely to be the kind of person who, given any prosecutorial power, would put some of these bastards in prison. This is, woman has now been elected to the Senate in Massachusetts, so what they successfully did by torpedoing her opportunity to serve in the executive branch as an appointed official they may very much regret because now she has real power in the Senate and I bet you anything they will not be able to defeat her in six years. 
Now, what happened to the right-wing abortion nuts? What happened to those guys that were running? Every single campaign that involved somebody who took an extreme anti-abortion stance based on religion was defeated yesterday. Every single one of them. There were like at least four. There were four gay marriage, same-sex marriage ballots. I don't know how people feel about it. It's not my issue, but they were all, they all went the way of greater liberty, the right to marry, etc. Yes, they did. Which I am extremely happy for myself, though it doesn't involve me. And uh, my home state, Colorado, and Washington now have a law that cannabis is a legalized recreational drug. Yes, it's, that's that is a, that is a change that is gonna that is obviously going to set up an, a most fascinating confrontation in the future sometime, because more and more states are going to want to do this. People move around in this country and they carry their values with them. Uh, that will set a situation up where the federal government is going to be forced to either give up its enforcement or take it to the absolute limit. Be an interesting thing to see how that turns out. Yeah. In any case, I see that my one criticism of Occupy is refusal to look to, re to electoral politics as though it can make a difference. It absolutely can and it always does. So you don't like what you see Obama doing he's I can name off half a dozen without trying things of, that are of the worst kind of things we can get out of an administration we all agree on that unfortunately however our single choice other than him that had any real chance of getting there was most certainly going to carry that that misuse of power far more than Obama ever would all right, and then since we are talking about politics and stuff, let me uh, just point the camera at myself real quick. What about what about Iceland? They have completely taken over their government, thrown the banksters and the people uh, in charge in jail. So if they can do it, why can't we? Uh, well. It's you that certainly easy, understand <laughs> that a question like that calls for speculation, which will right. be which will be correctly identified as speculation and having no basis other than my opinion on how that might work. Right. But absolutely no. It's I mean, we saw we saw. I I I do believe that is going to be difficult to do in this country. But if people knew anything about their own history, they would realize that it has been done before, several times. Yes. When the public values its power as the public, as the public, it expresses its power through government by getting control of it, by keeping it functioning in a legal manner. We do not have a government that is functioning in a legal manner. We have a government that is catering to the interests of people who have made it possible not to have to obey laws, financial laws that are supposed to apply to them. But if people would look back to their history, they would see Franklin Roosevelt fighting against the banks in a big way. We did it before, we can do it again. Absolutely. But do not dismiss the importance of electoral politics, and by that I include bipartisan or partisan against partisan politics. All of it plays a role in what we want or don't want. It's not the answer, but it has to be part of the situation, part of our toolbox. When, I mean, does anybody really disagree with that? I, I, I cons I'm concerned about the cynicism I see. I could uh, ask the viewers to uh, send in uh, emails to me if they have any disagreements. Well, I'm and sure stuff they're going to have. I'm hoping that there's <laughs> going. I, I'm hoping to be saying the kind of things that's going to get under people's skin, make well, them think about that's it. That's what I like. Cause, is, is cause conversation you got to be able to we, talk about it every everything's always got to be either or it's not either or you need everything and here we have we have whatever else is going to happen we have four years of an obama presidency facing us we don't know what's going to happen in, in 2016 
but assuming nothing terrible happens, we have a president for four years. That is the reality we're living in. We could have had another reality, and I am so glad we don't ever have to know what that one would have been. Well, let's hope he doesn't run again in four more years. Uh, I'm not afraid of him in four years. The Republican Party wouldn't even go near him. They, they would, they would say enough of this guy already. No, yeah. he's he knows it. He won't even pretend to be seeking a political office. You know what? I, what I don't understand is we have uh, somebody like Ron Paul out there, and um, he doesn't even touch the numbers. I mean, none of those third parties even touch the numbers. I looked at them, well, and there's ones, twos, threes, five percent, and everybody right. out there Absolutely has true. got to be better because than one of those parties, one or well, other of those parties that we currently have. Well, it's, it, you know, oh. every one of these parties... I just lost power. Okay. No, sorry. Yeah. What I was going to say is every one of these parties, including the Democrats and the Republicans, are simply... Can't keep